مساء الخير مع حضراتكم النهاردة دكتور حسن صلاح كامل أستاذ التوليد وأمراض النساء بكلية طب جامعة أسيوط ومدير وحدة تدريب مركز تدريب وأبحاث الموجات الصوتية بالجامعة والمشرف على مركز طب الجنين بقسم التوليد وأمراض النساء بجامعة أسيوط احنا النهاردة هنكمل الموضوع اللي ابتديناه من اسبوع اللي هو early pregnancy failure واتكلمنا فيه على two factors اتكلمنا المرة اللي فاتت على ال gestational sac واتكلمنا على الامنيون وبقي لنا ثلاثة items اللي هما الكوريون يوك sac and embryo دول اللي هنتكلم فيهم النهاردة <تصفيق> as regards الكوريون uh, uh, the most important item with the chorion uh, is the presence of subchorionic hematoma. Uh, this uh, subchorionic hematoma may be exactly uh, below the chorion uh, frondosum uh, or between the chorion frondosum and the cedio basalis, but it may take uh, some lateral position uh, between the, uh, um, the amnion and the uh, uterine wall. Uh, this is called uh, occasionally a retroamniotic hematoma. However, chorionic hematoma. Chorionic hematoma is uh, uh, frequently present with uh, cases of threatened abortion, and it means the uh, uh, presence of retained blood uh, clots within the uterine cavity. Uh, however, most studies did not find any statistical relationship between the presence of this hematoma, its size, and any adverse outcome. So, a big hematoma may be associated with good pregnancy outcome and a small hematoma may be associated with pregnancy failure. Uh, another finding uh, which is uh, not well explained actually, uh, there is uh, what is called chorionic bump. As you see in this uh, uh, picture, you can see a bulge of the chorion uh, rounded a vascular mass. When you apply the uh, color Doppler window, you will find it a vascular uh, a mass extending from the chorio decidua into the gestational sac. Uh, this is associated with fourfold increased risk of pregnancy loss. However, it's not well understood how it develops, but it is known that uh, its prognosis is not quite good. Uh, applying the color Doppler and color Doppler studies, blood flow studies for uh, the uh, uh, chorion to uh, uh, study the resistance of arterial or of the endometrial blood flow was associated uh, 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 with no uh, promising results. So it, uh, the blood flow, embedded blood flow or changes in blood flow could not discriminate between a viable pregnancy and pregnancy failure. So the value of color Doppler in this uh, item, with this item, is not uh, uh, quite uh, beneficial. Uh, our next item is the yolk sac. The yolk sac uh, uh, is uh, actually uh, uh, seen in early, one of the earliest landmarks seen in pregnancy. It's usually identified at five weeks and five days uh, when during uh, this the six week of pregnancy when the gestational sac diameter is uh, about 10 millimeter as we have said in our first lecture whenever the gestational sac is 10 millimeter the yolk sac should be seen within the sac and it's seen before the embryo is seen an um, abnormal yolk sac may be wrinkled may be irregular or wrinkled, like you see in this picture. Uh, other abnormalities include being collapsed, uh, thick ecogenic walls, uh, an appearance uh, of a doubled yolk sac, like seen in this picture, or large yolk sac, as you see, uh, the normal yolk sac ranges between 3 to 6 millimeters. Uh, a yolk sac less than 3 millimeters, that's 2 millimeter or below, or uh, yolk sac larger than 6 millimeters, that's 7 millimeters or more, 
is considered as abnormal. Uh, our last item is the embryo itself. The embryo uh, uh, has uh, some uh, words to be uh, said about it. The location of the embryo. The embryo is first seen as C-shaped structure, uh, as it looks as a part of the wall of the yolk sac, and it begins to distance uh, uh, away from the yolk sac uh, in about uh, 55 days gestation. Uh, the yolk sac maintains a thin connection to the embryo through the yolk stalk which can occasionally be seen on transvaginal sonogram. However, loss of connection with the embryo and loss of this anatomic relationship raises concern for the potential pregnancy failure. The embryo, uh, uh, as regards its cardiac activity, as we have said before, uh, four millimeters embryo in the absence of cardiac activity should raise concern for the possible pregnancy failure, prompting follow-up exam. Uh, usually, we see a 4 millimeter embryo within the seventh week of pregnancy when beta-HCG is about 10,000. However, if you see a 4 millimeters embryo, uh, by the time when uh, beta-HCG is 10,000, or uh, the gestational sac diameter is more than 20 millimeters, and this uh, uh, embryo should show definite cardiac pulsations. If you don't see definite cardiac pulsations in this embryo, uh, you co should consider pregnancy as inferior. Uh, embryonic heart rate starts uh, as slow in the uh, sixth week and increases steadily, uh, but fetal heart rate less than 85 uh, at gestation age between 8 uh, uh, weeks, gestational week, uh, uh, sorry, you can uh, estimate that a low fetal, low embryonic heart rate below 85 before 8 weeks is considered as abnormal and pregnancy loss is expected. The rule again, low embryonic heart rate below 85 at a gestational age below 8 weeks is considered as abnormal and pregnancy failure is expected. The slower rate of growth of the embryo is considered to be a, 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 as a sign a suggestive of pregnancy demise. Uh, when a disparity from the correct menstrual dates reaches one week or more, this will mean more than five millimeters and the size of the embryo, uh, the possibility of fetal demise will be higher. Uh, now, finally, we discuss the subject of retained products of conception. This is a very simple and easy but should be kept in mind. Clearly, that is, the presence of hyperechoic or hypoechoic uh, uh, content within the uterine cavity uh, uh, may be uh, misleading sometimes with blood clots. However, it's generally agreed that a content that is more thick, thicker than 8 millimeters, should have a, a, a high predictive value for histologically confirmed retained products of conception. So the question is that uh, does the patient require treatment or surgical intervention or not? This depends upon the size of the content. If it is more than 8 millimeter, treatment or surgery will be needed. If it is less than 8 millimeter, the patient may be left uh, uh, without any further treatment. Here is a picture that shows uh, a small product of conception and in this condition, the uh, uh, subject or the uh, management depends upon the measured thickness uh, produced in the caliber in this picture. Sometimes you don't see uh, contents within the uterus, but you should look carefully at the cervix. So in this picture, you see to the left side, the uh, cervix is descended with a product of conception, while the endometrium to the right side is empty. So that 
uh, this content uh, uh, should be cleared off uh, either medically or surgically. Here is a, a last picture uh, I uh, suggested to you uh, to uh, as a query. What do you see in front of you? Actually, what is this in this picture? Uh, to the left side, the picture looks like a product of conception. Actually, this patient was infertile patient with irregular uterine bleeding. The picture is of an endometrial polyp. The uh, picture with color doubler to the right side shows the sign uh, uh, we call single pulsating feeding vessel. If you see a single pulsating feeding vessel, this confirms the diagnosis of polyp and excludes the possibility of being a, a product of conception. And in addition, it confirms that the polyp is originating from the posterior wall and Finally, it also confirms the benign nature of the polyp because it has a single feeding vessel so that you should not uh, 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 rush into the diagnosis of retained products of conception until uh, whenever you see a single feeding vessel, you should put the diagnosis of endometrial polyp immediately. Thank you very much.